So this is Robert Decker. He is the Senior Vice President of Planning and Design for the park here. Is that right? Yeah. Get that right? Yep. Okay. And this is, uh, these are Ulster Project youth from Northern Ireland. They come here every July to uh, kind of meet on neutral ground. You know, in Northern Ireland, they've had uh, trouble connecting because of religion and things. And that's what, uh, where Ulster Project was based and just coming here and, awesome. and meeting and uh, making friends and taking that piece home. So I love that. Fantastic. So you're here for how long in the States? Four weeks. Four weeks? Oh, wow. Are you traveling? Uh, the company now? We're all we're based in Maslow, yes. Canton area. Yeah. And the furthest to travel is Niagara Falls. Uh -huh. We're doing our project in Maslow. Oh, that's really cool. I'm so glad you're here. Fantastic. There is more of us, but we don't know what they are. Oh, well, they're riding rides. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you can do next. Yeah, well, terrific. Well, welcome. So what can you tell us interesting that we would only learn from the VP of Planning and Design? Well, we have, um, we have Cedar Point, which is our, our main park, and uh, it all started here in 1870. So the park, I mean, compared to your country, this is old, right? 150 years old uh, for an establishment. And uh, it all started here because in northern Ohio, um, there are islands out here, seven islands, and Cedar Point's on a peninsula. When you, when you drove in, you probably drove the causeway, right? Water on either side. So it's the largest park in the world, 364 acres. It has the most rides of any park in the world. It has the best water coaster of any park. So it's really made us smart. But it started as a hotel and a beach. Because back before air conditioning, this was the coolest place in Ohio. It's like 10 to 15 degrees cooler than everywhere else because you always got the bridge. So people back then, they would take a steamer boat or a train or uh, eventually the automobile to come here. And then they would walk from the steamers right there and they would go all the way to the beach. And that's where our Hotel Breakers is. So that's how it all started. It started as a place to come for recreation. All the rides came much later. In the 1900s, early 1910, 1920, the roller coasters were built. And now it is what it is today. We have 10 other parks across North America. Uh, we have one in Toronto, two in California, some on the East Coast. And my job is really to take what is a mini city where people, 35,000 to 40 people come every day and make sure it works. So I do the planning for the park. And that's from food and beverage to admissions to the roller coaster rides, to the attractions. I don't get involved that much in shows because I have no other talents. So I don't sing, I don't dance, or any of that kind of stuff. Um, and so that's what's interesting to me is really working for people, making them happy, make them scream, terrify them a little bit, and then send them <laughs> on their way. So uh, roller coasters are my passion. And uh, Val Raven was uh, one of uh, the more recent projects I worked on. My first one here was Millennium Force, uh, the big blue one in the back, which for a number of years held the world's number one roller coaster. And uh, that's been eclipsed by another ride that I uh, worked on in, in Charlotte uh, called Fury 325. That's number one, now that's number two. So it kind of broke my heart, but <laughs> what the heck, to have a one and two. Uh, but our company, I came here as a designer because I think Cedar Fair is the best operators. Very safety focused, very safety minded. We're not always perfect because on big days, sometimes the lines get off. as they want during the day. And everyone says, well, what's next and what's the future? And what we're really thinking about is, um, I think the park's a little hardwired. We offer all these rides. Hi, welcome. Hello. We offer all these rides, all these shows, and all of these experiences, and it's like a menu. You get to choose what you want to do while you're here. But eventually, and I think with another generation growing up, I mean, what would you tell us that you want to do when you're here? And then go do it. And create your own fun and, you know, to have this just be the platform for that. An idea along those lines that we're starting to work with is uh, augmented reality in your mobile device, right? And if you download cedarpoint.com and get our mobile app, 
we have little markers throughout, like in the bow raven queue, where you can open that up and it tells you more about it. But also, a whole wall comes to life and zombies come out of it. <laughs> just trying to keep current and modern and sometimes we're behind the technological curve but we're, we want to catch up and just make people happy just have fun that's the bottom line I like it I'm sorry sir we started zip we they take three years always something in the hopper for three years out and then the rest of the stuff about a year and a half to two years to plan and make sure. And then if, um, if we're really doing our jobs, we're five years out with the planning and 10 years out with the forecasting of what might be another trend, you know, that comes to our industry that we might want to think about. Look at that. It has inversions. There's still vengeance at the back of the park. There's a wood poster that one of us built. 95? Yeah, something like that. It, uh, it was the tallest in the world. It was the biggest wood poster in the world. 165 feet. That's a problem. It's great, but it's a problem. Because coasters in that range, they start to defeat themselves. There's so much force in the wood that we faithfully restored it every year for all the damage that occurs. Every day, the carpenters walk the track and look for loose bolts and nails that need to be popped back in. And a wood coaster is like that. You have to love it, you have to maintain it, you have to really deliver uh, all the time. But they get rough. And a lot of people would write it and say, oh man, it's so rough. It, it, it was, it was rough. named right. It was painful. Yeah, but Main Street. Would write it and say, I love this. <laughs> chattering and et cetera. There's a technology now that's been in play for about eight years where we put steel track like this on top of wood. It sounds so simple. And Gemini has a steel rail on top of the wood track, and that was done in 78. But now we can do inversions. Now we can raise it up to 205 feet and get 70 plus miles an hour on a perfectly smooth track. Perfectly smooth. And the inversions mean you're going upside down. You're doing barrel rolls and, and different things. So it's much more dynamic. I so think that's the wood frame. So you still zoom through the wood. And there's always that low beam where you go, oh, it's a little too tight, a little too low. So it gets that sort of visceral effect for you. All the speed and all the dynamics. So that's our new ride this year. I think you did a fantastic job in transitioning that and I think that's what's so exciting about it is that it is so smooth. The inversions, you know, it might take you upside down but they're so smooth and rolling through that wood is just, yeah, what makes it really exciting. Thanks. So um, I've ridden it a few times. Some people have already ridden it a couple hundred at least. We have, we have um, the coaster enthusiasts, as we would call them, that will come here and ride the ride, get back in line, ride, 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 ride. They love it that much. And it's, it's not, that, not that we build rides for them, because they, they can do anything. They can jump out of buildings and free fall, they can skydive. There's real secrets, right? So we kind of cater to them. The ride's broad enough that anyone can ride them, one can call them, and get, and get a thrill and a scare, but not having it be so extreme that only 200 people want to ride it. So that's kind of the trick. You have to strike the balance of being thrilling and terrifying and not too intimidating that no one will get off. I think Gatekeeper does a good job of that. I think it's a family ride. It's, it's modest yeah. in its dynamics, what the body will take. And, and all the forces, um, but it has a couple of neat elements. Yeah. Any questions, anyone? You can tell I like to talk about this stuff. <laughs> Fastest top throw dragster. It's a tall yellow one. And it's themed like a dragster, you know, a racing car. And it's <laughs> like really 
<laughs> it's 120 miles an hour, and you do that in under four seconds. Is she ready? <laughs> She's going, yeah, 120 miles an hour. 120 miles an hour. I did not write that. Does that translate? Yeah, this still translates. Very well, yeah. Um, in under four seconds, so faster than a, than a Porsche, faster than some all the uh, street legal cars. It's yeah. like a slingshot to the sun and back. That's yeah. the way I explain it. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's really slick because it, it's a hydraulic launch poster. It launches the poster. So from the stationary position, let's go. And if you think about that, um, aircraft carriers have hydraulic launch to launch aircraft. And it's that kind of force that you need, like right now. And then it resets. And the reset means nitrogen chambers are charged to create the pressure that can be released. And the release has to go in the form of whatever type of energy uh, yield you want. Like in here, there's a cable that comes down and catches the car a thousand feet down. And as soon as it's released, it pulls this way because it's wound up in a wheel that's almost as big as this circle here. It's huge. Big planetary motors. So it's like a fishing reel, really fast. Pulls a car and sends it up over the top. Is there any time that tells me like dog? What'd you say? Is there any time that tells me like dog? Great question. Like, like the mission's defeated, like it didn't, didn't quite make it over the top. And that's called a rollback, and people would pay extra money for it. <laughs> but we don't like rollbacks because you go up, you don't make it, you go backwards, and then you go through a brake field. So you gently come to a rest. You have to think about that, right? That's a good question. But if it doesn't make it, you can't go back in the station. You have to go through a brake field. So as soon as it's lost, the brakes come on. When you see it, you see these big copper fins about that big. You come back to that field and break. So when we first talked about that ride with the supplier and the manufacturer, we said, what happens if you get stuck at the top? He was Swiss, and I have a terrible Swiss accent because I don't speak a bit of French. But he says, you kind of get stuck at the top. Yes, when you get stuck at the top, what do we do? It's impossible. No, it's not impossible. <laughs> Anything's possible. So what happens? So you'll see an elevator on the back of it. And it just lifts right up and it goes all the way up to the top. We use that for maintenance purposes for inspections too. And sure enough, in the first year, the train sticks to the top. <laughs> and there's a guy in our maintenance division who's since retired, and I was terrified of this guy. He was a rusty old guy, and he had this rough voice and everything. And you can just see, he just barely makes it over the top, right? So it got stuck up at the top, and he got the call. Hey, Greg's are stuck at the top. He's like, Arr! so he comes down. And he goes up there, and he takes the elevator up, right? And there are people up at the top that have been up there for like 10, 15 minutes. And he said, oh my god, oh my god, well, what are we going to do, what are we going to do? And, uh, and he said, oh, I'm going to get you down. He said, really, well, 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 what are you going to do, how are you going to do it? He said, well, you're going to go down. He held onto the rail, and he took the back car, and he just pushed it, and it went right up. <laughs> stuck and we got them through and they had to go through the ride they didn't get to go backwards one time i had a call by uh media marketing and they said hey there's a tv uh, crew out here do you want to ride dragster with them i said yeah i do uh, uh, I have a meeting. sorry i have a meeting conflict can you get my friend monty to do it and i'm so glad that they got monty because on camera we had a roll back it had a rollback. And Monty's sitting there like this. And, and they're getting ready to launch. He said, now occasionally we have a rollback in the morning because of the temperature, right? And the reporter said, well, what's a rollback? Let's well, so go backward and we'll be fine. You go under the brakes just as I explained to you. And she said, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And then boom, they launched. And they get up to the top and he says, uh oh, now we're going to roll back. And she goes, we're going to go all the way down on camera. He's sitting there like he's watching TV. And he's just, I would have been <laughs> on camera. Hi, okay. right, welcome, guys. I'm usually the
the calm one. <laughs> I'm not so calm. Yeah. <clears throat> this one's good because it's a dive coaster and it's all about being brought up to the top 223 feet tall. Here it comes, watch and guys. You come over the edge and it holds you there just to freak you out. And then boom, drops. It's like the old demon drop, but better. Yeah, yeah. are stadium seating so everyone gets the view. The front row is the best for the view. But if you think about the eight across, it's a really big train and the track is very stout because of that. The extreme right is on the outer edge. So that's that fulcrum. And the rotation of course will push you up and over much more than if you're on the track and you just tuck and roll. So if you wanted the extreme ride back and out, it gets all of the force. I think Maverick is a good ride for the back. I always tell people if you can ride it twice, ride in the front, then ride in the back to see what a different ride it is in the back, really. I think that's hilarious. I hear from people all the time, ride the back seat because it's much faster than the front. And I'm thinking, does it finish before the front? <laughs> what they're saying is, you're coming up over a hill, and as you're cresting and you're in the front car, you're going kind of slow. The top of the momentum's on this side, that back car gets whipped over the top. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. So if you want an aggressive ride, it's back. If you want the neutral ride with more airtime, it's middle. If you want to be the owner of the ride, you own it because there's no one in front of you, front car. <laughs> Millennium Force is one of my favorites. I, I like to make it the last ride of the day, and I was lucky enough to ride it on Media Day, so I have that video of getting the facelift, you know? <laughs> so I think it's terrific that you're here. It's fantastic. You have a nice warm day. It's a perfect day, you've really. Had so much rain. I don't know how long have you been here in the States already? Two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. You got to see a bit of the rain earlier, maybe. Nice. Not too bad. It's melting. Yeah, it's hot. It's especially in the sun. They actually helped us clean and plant flowers in a park in Canton called Nemesilla Park. Oh, cool. Uh, on Saturday. So, really helped to beautify that park. We have a garden there that kids from uh, the Ulster Project planted in the shape of an infinity symbol to represent infinite peace back in 2010. So when they come here, we have them, you know, plant something in there just to keep the Irish hands in it. And, uh, and then, there's a, then there's a garden bowl. There's a bowl that used to be a fountain in the early days of the park that they planted flowers in as well. So. But um, anybody have any more questions for Mr. Decker? What's your personal favorite book? It's like choosing between my children. Which one do I love the most? They're all different. Oh. Yeah. Well, my first one here was Millennium Four, so that's a sentimental favorite. Sentimental favorite. Who was the uh, company Millennium Force? Intimate. Okay. And this is Bulliger and Mavillard, right? Yes. And uh, yeah, Top Thrill? Top Thrill's Intimate. Is oh, that's Intimate. Are intimate. they from Switzerland, too? Uh, yes. Okay. Intamin is the Ferrari of the industry. Fast, really sexy. B&M is the tried, tested, true Mercedes yeah. <laughs> of the industry. Never fails. Everything's perfect all the time. I would, I would, yeah. I met Claude and had some wonderful conversations with him. I used to call him at home, and one time I called him, and his wife says, no, he's not here. Oh, no, here he comes up the walk. Claude, and I'm thinking... You know, how open is this guy? It was just so wonderful to have those conversations. It looks like these guys want to get in the show. Yeah, I think so. You guys want to go ride, right? Okay. Top road ride, sir. Let me get a picture of you with uh, Mr. Decker, can we? Want me, what about you? I'll get a picture of you in here. Uh, well. Is this good? Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Where do I go?